happy Monday, everybody. I wanted to go through for you what's good and what's bad about supportive networks. And uh, there are a lot of opinions about that as to whether or not it's actually helpful to have a network of support around you in your community, network of friendships, of um, fellowships, of community support. This can either be empowering for you and life-giving, or it can actually be debilitating and draining depending on the people that you choose. So why would you need a network of support to start with. What are they good for? Some people think this is only good in a time of crisis and if you don't anticipate having any crisis in your life, if things are going pretty well, then what do you need that for? You don't need those other people. Um, fortunately, everybody comes upon times of crisis in their life. It's kind of inevitable living on the planet Earth that you're going to come across hardship in life. Uh, the second thing to be aware of is that you don't simply need these people around you to help you be who you need to be just in times of crisis. We need people around us because they help us become who we're meant to be. It's difficult to fulfill your best purpose to become your truest self in isolation. So they serve three purposes actually. One is obviously to support us in times of crisis when we do need other people around us to help us get through. The second thing and the more consistent thing that we need them for is to help us become more the person that we are supposed to be. We cannot fulfill a function in the world and make the world a better place and become our fulfilled self, the one who is fulfilling our potential to make the world greater if we're trying to live in isolation outside of networks of support. And then thirdly, the people around us will see what we cannot. They can see areas that we need to grow when we may be blind to those things ourselves. So people in a support network can help us strengthen when we don't even realize we are weak. And it's not necessarily in a critical way. It can be in a very loving and supportive way that people simply say, you know, you could be doing more with your life. You actually have the potential to lead, and we don't recognize that we have potential to do more. So people around us can actually identify our strengths, our flaws, our blind spots, and help us achieve things that we would not have achieved and become a person we would not have become without their support. So those are the three main reasons why we need a support network around us, people that fulfill certain potential. Now, as I said, a support network can either be debilitating or it can be life-giving. It can be empowering, depending on who you choose. If you choose toxic people to surround you with, they will be debilitating. If you choose people that aren't trustworthy, it can be crippling. So it's very important to know what to look for in building your support network. And the first thing that you wanna look for in building a positive, empowering, life-giving support network would be shared values. You want to have people that are going to have an others-minded uh, perspective. So choosing people that are involved in others-minded activities, volunteer organizations that aren't simply glorified chambers of commerce, and I don't have anything against a chamber of commerce, but the chamber of commerce simply serves the purpose of helping you do more business. And that is not what you want for a support network for your personal growth and strength. You need other people who are actually involved in charitable organizations for the purpose of really caring about that charity. So whatever charitable uh, causes that tug at your heart, people that are also interested in similar causes, children, animals, the elderly, the environment, there are a number of causes that you could be interested in and those are certainly just a few. There are many more than that. So think about those kinds of things, homelessness, hunger, um, disabled veterans. There are just a million things that you could possibly get together with other people and begin to work on charitable causes with them. And you'll find people in those causes. Keep trying different organizations until you find those who are genuinely concerned about other people. Those will be the kinds of people that will be a good support network for you. The second thing that you want to find would be people who are consistent, people that are going to be around you on a regular basis. Make sure that you stay in touch with these people constantly so that they can be there for you in times of crisis and that they can actually see 
what you need them to see for you that you can't see in your own life where you can grow and and help you be able to have an opportunity to fulfill your potential so consistency shared values and also this other very tricky thing to filter out that would be whether these are reliable people whether they have integrity whether they are trustworthy you want to look for people who have healthy boundaries people that are willing to have healthy dynamics in the relationship that means you're not always going to have a 50 50 relationship with your close friends sometimes they're going to need your support more and sometimes you will need their support more however you definitely don't want someone in with whom you have a one-sided relationship either way you want to be contributing to them some of the time and you want them to also be willing to contribute to you some of the time if it's all about them all the time that's not a healthy relationship and that is not something that's going to give you a life-giving support network so you want to look for people who are at a place in their life where they're healthy enough to be involved in balanced relationship dynamics again there will be days when they're going through a crisis that they'll need more support from you than you need from them that's normal you just don't want it to be all one-sided in either direction all of the time and we'll get into more of that next week when I talk to you about the varying degrees of intimacy in your friendships not all of your friendships will be at that close personal intimate level but you do need a network of support that involves different levels of closeness in your friendships because you need lots of people a big group of people a medium-sized group of people a closer group of people and then a small inner circle of people so we'll talk about that more next week but for the first week of this discussion on building a network of support I simply wanted to give you some tips on why you need it and what to start looking for in those relationships so I look forward to hearing your comments about this and and if you have any questions about building a network of support or, or if you want to field those kinds of questions in um, consulting appointments certainly a life coach I'm a life coach any life coach could actually help you work through that and if you're involved in a relationship you think might be toxic that would definitely be a life coaching thing to help step you through whether this relationships right for you or not and and whether you need to move on because sometimes cutting loose toxic relationships is what will set you free so I look forward to talking to you on my blog about this more and I hope you have a fantastic and wonderful rest of your week the last week of September and I will see you again next Monday